George Santos is naming names. The expelled congressman sat down for an interview with comedian and journalist Z-Way, where he spilled dirt on exactly who in Congress is paying, is paid out. I wasn't there to play nice. I was there to expose the rot and corruption, and I did. And I'm going to continue to do it. Republicans and Democrats alike. Swampy, slimy people selling this country down a river. I would say that you are a messy that lives for drama, true uh, or false? Uh, you can call me a messy bitch. I, I've been called worse, but I'll take it. Okay. I'll, can you make a pin and, and mail it to me? I'll, I'll send wear you, it. I'll send you. I will wear your messy bitch pin any day. I will send you a gift as long as you declare it on your taxes. I definitely. I like paying taxes. Who else in Congress is committing fraud? They're all frauds. Name them. If, you, if, you, if, you if you were to put me, Name him. if you were to put them Name all him. under the same scrutiny I was put under, mm. you'd vacate the whole goddamn building. Can I name him and you just wink if Go I... Go ahead! Marjorie Taylor Greene. No. Kevin McCarthy. Yes. Lindsey Graham. Yes. Matt Gates. No. Bob Menendez. Absolutely. Gold Bar Menendez. Dan Goldman. He doesn't pay his rent. Dan Good... Dan... Dan is owing $180,000 worth of rent right now on his $45,000 monthly rent, which is what most Americans make a year. You let that shit sink in. The way you know everyone's business is humbling to me. So that's interesting. He didn't exactly name names, but he gave like a, like an, a thumbs up or a thumbs down <laughs> on the names uh, that she came up with. Um, you know, he says uh, he said they're all frauds. Uh, fact check, totally true, yes. accurate, correct. Um, you know, I, and I have we, we've talked about George Santos a lot, and, and and frankly, we haven't even talked about it as much as like the broader media complex because they're obsessed with this story because it's kind of salacious and it's kind of funny and the frauds he was engaged in and ad admitted to um, were, uh, were made for good headlines, um, that kind of thing. But it is true, and he's right, he's not doing anything about it, but there is a broader level of corruption in Congress, uh, you know, just in terms of like the stock trading, you know, them making making money off information they have privately about, you know, what's going to happen in the COVID space, for instance, you know, so who, how many of them sold or changed their stock portfolios based on that, and they get to they get to make the regulations that all the companies have to go f forward. So it's not even like, well, you know, anyone could have access to that information, you know, if you were connected enough, that's your right to benefit from that, I guess. But they also get to like make the rules for how all the companies have to operate. So it's totally crazy that they can do that, and then also like directly profit from that. Yeah, and then when they leave Congress, they get to go into consulting or lobbying where they then use their insider connections and the information that they got while they were members of Congress to make millions of dollars um, advocating on behalf of specific products or causes or what have you, even individuals and their access to Congress. And it just becomes this sort of revolving door of corruption. So I kind of feel like George Santos should, of course, be held accountable for whatever he's done that's illegal. He's accused of um, having all kinds of campaign finance violations where he was essentially using donor money, allegedly, to pay for cosmetic treatments, to go on vacation, to pay for his housing and all kinds of other um, absurd uh, allegations that have come out in the House Ethics Report, which led to his expulsion from Congress. But if on the way out he turns himself into sort of a kamikaze pilot that exposes other members of Congress who are perhaps equally as or more so corrupt, then I'm all for it. Let's yeah. uh, I'm on I'm on board for the drama. But we were, for sure. But we we weren't really getting any new revelations there. Like Very true. Menendez is you know so, it's so public what he's been accused of. Um, John Fetterman has called for him to go in very strong language. So have a number of other people. Um, uh, I, I think uh, the with Kevin McCarthy, the um, the issues that many conservatives have with him, their grievances were very well publicized, and in fact led to him being shown the door. So uh, you know, some new some new information would be would be very useful. That's a great point. I do find myself constantly underwhelmed by when George Santos promises to deliver the mm -hmm. goods, promises to spill the tea, and then when it comes down to brass tacks, he never really 
offers anything that's not already publicized. I want the inside scoop. Like, I want to know what was going on at, uh, you know, Madison Cawthorn's alleged uh, Coke-fueled orgies. Did you see that Madison Cawthorn responded, I think, on Twitter or Instagram to the story, which we covered in another block, very humorous, watch if you, well, watch at your own risk, um, the, uh, the, the young man who had the, the uh, had sex 16, in the in yeah. the Senate and has been fired. Uh, Madison Cawthorn respond Cawthorn responded to that saying, "See, I told you." Of course, that's not really what Madison Cawthorn said. He said there was like, what a cocaine orgies that he'd been invited. He to? He was invited to stuff with other members of Congress, I think. Did he say but specifically it was Republican too? I think that's so. what made Kevin McCarthy really mad at him. Right, because he was sort of selling out his own party without any evidence. But I or... always I always felt like just having lived in D.C. for as long as I have and seen maybe like a tenth of, a, of the behavior that pe members mm -hmm. of Congress sometimes get involved in, I was not at all disbelieving of what Madison Cawthorn mm -hmm. said. But maybe I'm just a, a cynic at heart. I also, again, don't care. All I care is them um, spending my money and raising my taxes and doing bad foreign policy. And doing, I only care about their <laughs> bad policies. I, if they were all, you know, all having sex with each other in a cocaine orgy of bipartisan uh, fun, that, sound, that would be bad only if the result of that is then we send much more money to Ukraine. That's all I care about. <laughs> if it's a Just Ukraine, end the policy. If it's a pro-Ukraine orgy. If, if they have Ukraine flags up on the walls. If drugs <laughs> distract them from shipping more of our tax dollars overseas, that sounds like a good reason to legalize drugs to me. Oh, my goodness. But, of course, um, that's not the way it works because no, it's not. this is all going on and the bad policy is happening. I, I suppose I would just question the judgment of people who get involved in that. But Fair enough. Um, I'm more of a moralist. You uh, are. Yeah. See, there are differences. We thought it, it, we didn't know how this would work out today, having two <laughs> right-of-center people, but uh, there's, an, there's enough to disagree about. Oh, yeah. By the end of the show, we'll end up hating each other. It'll be <laughs> wonderful. Just as much as we do <laughs> with our respective The viewers are going to love couples. watching this <laughs> unravel. <laughs> it, was a, it was a very, uh, it was a funny day, the topics lined up for today. So hopefully we did them as best we could. Thank you for tuning in. Tomorrow on Rising, Brianna will be back with us. Uh, we're so grateful for Amber coming in and filling in. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any of our content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, now available anywhere podcasts are available. Have a good one.